Here we go. Mark your own. I didn't leave you much room to show work. I'm going to kind of have to do it all over the place here, or you could have done it on a scrap piece of paper. On your test, I'll make sure I show you, leave you room to do work. Uh, if log base x of 3 equals a and log base x of 25 equals b, determine an expression for log base x of 9 over 5. First thing I said is I'm not using the base change law. Because it's base x, base x, base x. So that's nice. I already removed one complete strategy. Then I thought about this, and Amanda, I said, you know what? That 9, I bet, goes with that 3. And that 5, I bet, goes with that 25. I bet you that's why they picked those numbers. I said one more thing, Katie. I said, well, Mr. Duick says, if they give you a bunch of logs, try and combine them. If they give you one log, try and break it up. Shannon, they gave me one log. I'm going to try and break it up. So I wrote it like this, first of all. Log base x of 9 minus log base x of 5. Why minus? Because dividing inside a log, same as subtracting outside a log. Now what? Well, what's right here, Itzel? What's right here? I disagree. What's right here? You know what I really see here? Another 3. I see this. Is that not a 3? And is that not also a 9? So I haven't violated any math rules. It's still the same question. I've just made it look different. But why is that so handy? Steph, what can I do with this here 2 here? Darn right. I think on my next line, I would write this as 2 log base x of 3. And I would drop the minus sign down. Nathaniel, let's play that same game. Nathaniel, what's right here? What's right here? I disagree. What's right here? You know what here? This is also a 25. How could I write this as 25 to some power? 20, no, not 5 squared. Not, I don't want to write it as 5 as a 20. I want to write it as 25 to something. Ah, 25 square root or 25 to the 1 half. I think I can rewrite this as, is that not still a 5? Yes. But doesn't that look a little closer to that? Yes. And what can I do, Stephanie, with that 1 half? Also move it to the front. Why is that so nice? Well, as it turns out, I'm nearly done because this question says, you know what log base x of 3 can be replaced with? A. And you know what log base x of 25 can be replaced with? B. So I think this whole thing is really 2a minus a half b, which is, uh, oh, a. How many of you got that? Okay, so more of you getting the, like I said, there's kind of a science and an art to these, and suddenly you see it, and nah, uh, yeah. Uh, number two says, what's an expression for the log of n if n equals that? Oh, you know what? I'm going to take the log of both sides, because that will give me log of n on one side. I think the first thing I would do then is this. The log of big N equals the log of a over 5b. I would glance and see if I saw that answer. No, I don't quite. I see lots of answers with multiple logs. I think they want me to break this up, so I will. On top means what? Positive. On the bottom means what? Because when we reversed it, we said positives on top, negatives on the bottom. Reversing it is, hey, if it is on top, it'll be positive when you pull it out of the log. If it is on the bottom, it'll be negative when you pull it out. So it's going to be log A minus log 5 minus log B. And, oh, C. Okay. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of picking D because they say, oh, those two are being multiplied, and so multiplying means that. No, 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 no. Where is that B? Is it on the top or on the bottom? 
that b is on the bottom. It's being multiplied onto everything on the bottom, which means fundamentally it's still dividing because it's on the bottom. It's negative. Number three I thought was the toughest multiple choice. I looked at this and I went, no idea. Haven't got a clue. Well, no, I have a little bit of a clue. Amanda, what's my base right here? What's my base here? 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 You know what? I'm going to base change, and I'm going to base change either to base B or base X. Which one? Well, my first thought was, why don't I go base B, because maybe something nice will happen with a 1 over B changing into a base B. I have no idea where I'm going, but that was my reasoning. So how would I write this whole thing as base B? I said, okay. First I drew a little line so I wouldn't get confused in my work. I said, this is the same as the log base B of X all over the log base B of 1 over B. Sorry for writing so small. I hope you can read that. That's the base change law. Oh, I said, I, well, I looked at the denominator. The log base B of 1 over B, that I can evaluate. What is the log base B of 1 over B to what power equals 1 over B? I think I heard somebody say, I, I, negative, yeah, I think negative 1. So I said, oh, this is really just the log base b of x over a negative 1. And then I said, Katie, you know, dividing by negative 1, that just makes your whole answer negative. And then I smiled. I said, hey! There it is. There it is. Just curious, how many of you got all three of the multiple choice right? Because those are, I mean, I didn't water these ones down. So if you did, well played. Number four, this is a log equation. We said our strategy for a logarithmic equation was we want to write it as one thing equals one thing. One term equals one term. The right hand side already is one term, so I'm good with that. The left-hand side, I'm adding two logs. Why? That's the same as multiplying them if the bases are the same, and they are. Can I do this? No, no, the logs don't cancel. The logs would cancel itself if I had one log equals one log, and even then they weren't technically canceling. I was taking the analog of both. Whatever. Oh, ooh, what did we do here? We got to this line and we had a log equals a number. What did we do here? Amanda, you're right. What? Yeah, this and the phrase, the trigger phrase I tried to give you guys is if I know one, I know both. If I know the log equation, I know the exponent equation. What to the power of what equals what? I'm pretty sure 12 to the power of 1 equals what's inside the log. And I'm already sensing I'm probably going to need more room. So, Mr. Duick, move that up a little bit like that. And I'm going to, oh, and I'm going to get rid of the 1 there. What is 12 to the 1? 12. Uh, I ended up on my next line with 12 equals, and I foiled this out. I got a 6. You know what? Because this is with the x at the very end. Normally, I try and do all this in my head, but they got the x's negative, and on the end, I'll be a bit more paranoid. I'll show all my steps. So it's going to be 6 minus 3x minus 2x plus x squared. 12 equals. I'll have an x squared. I'll have a minus 5x, and I'll have a plus 6. What kind of an equation is this? Why, it's a quadratic. How do I know? What's the first thing I do before I even factor? What's the first thing I do? I make it equal to 0. 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 6, because I would subtract 12 from both sides. 
Then I would try and factor this. Numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. I think negative 6 and positive 1. I think my roots are 6 and negative 1. Oh. We have to find out if Ryan does get his date after all. If I put a 6 in here, what's 3 take away 6? What? Sorry, what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's try a little negative 1 right here. What's 3 minus minus 1? Oh, I like that's okay. What's 2 minus minus 1? Ah, oh, that's okay as well. So, for three marks, if you ended up with most of this and a 6 and a negative 1 and you crossed out the 6. Otherwise, how did I give up part marks? That's a great question, Mr. Duick. How did I give up part marks on this? This is quiz 4. Semester 1 or semester 2? It doesn't say. It says semester 2? I hope I gave out part marks on this on my original answer key. Let's find out. Yeah, I knew I did. So I would probably give you a half mark if you combine the logs. A half mark for realizing that 12 to the 1 equals what's inside the log. A half mark if I saw the lovely quadratic equation appear. A half mark for the factors. A half mark for the roots, each of the roots, but you would lose a half mark if you didn't cross out the extraneous. Example 5. We call this an exponential equation. How do I know? The x is an exponent. How do I solve this? Take the log of both sides. And no shortcuts here, Mr. Duick says. Too easy to make sloppy mistakes. Move the exponents to the front with brackets. Get rid of the brackets by multiplying. How many x terms do I have? Two. Are they on the same side? No. Get them to the same side. Now look up. Here is, Kirsten, my preference. This is not a math rule. I find I make dumb mistakes with negatives, Kirsten. So even though the easiest way to get all the logs to the same side would be to minus this here, I actually chose to plus this guy to this side because that got rid of that negative and plus this guy to this side because that got rid of that negative. Does that make sense? I liked it better. So I wrote this like 2x log 3 plus x log 5 equals log 3. You don't have to. You could have got your x's to the same side. I just, Katie, make dumb mistakes with negatives, and I've learned that over the years. How many x terms do I have? Two. How many would I prefer, Steph? It'd be wonderful if there's some kind of a grade 9 mathematical operation that I could, you know, pull out of my back pocket, as it were. I can factor an x out. Now what? Get the x by itself. How? It's so what's happening between the x and the bracket. So how would I move that ugly bracket over? Yep. It's math 8. It's ugly math 8. I agree. But it really, on this level, is math 8. x is going to be the log of 3 all over 2 log 3 plus log 5. Or you might have a negative here, a negative here, and a negative here. It's the same answer. Oh, two decimal places, Mr. Duick. Okay. Pull out my trusty calculator. How many terms on top, Carson? 
so I can probably be sloppy with brackets on the top. How many terms on the bottom? Better open bracket, write the bottom, close off the bottom. Oh, and I was closing off each log bracket along the way without even thinking about it because I have to anyways. The answer is 0 0.29. Yes? 0 0.29. If you didn't round off to two decimal places, if you went 0 0.288, I won't take a half mark off. If you did round off to two decimal places and you said the answer is 0 0.28, I'm taking a half mark off because rounding is math. They learn to round off properly. 0 0.288 is 0.29. Now, if you got that and you showed work, you get two out of two. Otherwise, how did I give up part marks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. Oh, would have been nice if there was eight lines. I gave a half mark off, a half mark for that line, half mark if you move the exponent to the front, a half mark if you're able to get the x by itself, and a half mark for the answer. I'll be honest, on a test, I'd probably make this worth three marks or maybe even four. Which means if you get it, it's free marks. Which means if you can't get it, it's throwing away a lot of work. Some of you have been clever enough to turn the page. Hey, turn the page. This is as tough as an exponential equation will get. It's still an exponential, Nicole. X is an exponent. Still going to start out the same way. Take the log of both sides. I am not going to move the exponent to the front, not yet, because if I move this exponent to the front, I'd be saying it was on the 5 and it's not. Instead, I'm going to recognize it's so what's happening between the 5 and the bracket. That's the same as adding outside the log. I'm going to break this log up. Bear with me. Keep going. Uh, it's going to be the log of, uh, oh, and the 2... And the 2x plus 1, those are now separate logs, Mr. Duick. And now I can move the exponents to the front. The log 5 drops down like a domino. I get a 2x plus 1. Log 2 equals 3 minus x log 7. Who bought solution manuals? So just a reminder, when you're looking at the solution manuals, what the author does now is he changes this to a decimal, like to eight decimal places, and this as well, and he multiplies them in. He changes that to a decimal, I think, as well, and he just gathers like terms. Like he treats it like a grade eight math equation with decimals and things like that, which works just fine, except it doesn't work very well if there's a non-calc section or if they say for as an exact value. So I still like to keep going and say, okay, uh, boom, 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 boom. This is going to be the log of 5 plus 2x log 2 plus log 2 equals 3 log 7 minus x log 7. Get all my x's to the same side. I guess I'll minus this to this side and plus and minus that to that side. I'll get log 5 plus log 2 minus 3 log 7 equals negative x log 7 minus 2x log 7. Tyson, how many x terms do I have? Two. How many would I prefer? It would be wonderful as a grade 9 mathematical operator. Blah, blah. Yeah, I can factor out the x now. I don't have to go over here. Log 5 plus log 2 minus 3 log 7 equals, need more room, uh-oh, problem, Mr. Duick. I'm going to have to go over here. That is so handy, I have to admit, that is just so handy. Uh, factor out an x and I'll have a negative a log 7, and a minus, and a 2. 
Are they both log sevens, or did I do a glitchy thing here? This this is a log two, isn't it? And suddenly it became a log seven. Did I say that there was easy to make dumb mistakes along the way if you're not really, really careful? I'm telling you, it is. At least I caught it. So that should be a log two. Did I fix it here? It's still a log two. Okay, that all looks good. So if I've recovered, this is going to be factoring out a two log two, I hope. Holy smokes is the answer, please tell me. Log five plus log two minus three log seven all over negative log seven minus two log two. Is that correct, boys and girls? People are nodding. Of course, I can always check because I'm going to type this monstrosity into my calculator. And then before I hand my test in, I'll graph left side, graph right side, and find where they cross. And I better get the same answer. Uh, anyways, let's type this puppy in. Bracket. Log 5 plus, oh no, close off bracket, Mr. Duke. Plus log 2, close bracket. Minus 3, log 7, close bracket, close bracket, divided by bracket. Negative log 7, close bracket, minus 2, log 2, close bracket, close bracket. Do you guys get 1.06? What does it say? How many decimal places? 2? 1.06. How would I give part marks out there? For 4 marks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 lines. I'd probably go a half mark for each line, I bet you. Let's see if that's what I did. Yeah, look at that, a half mark for each line. And I also apparently added more space on my answer keys so that I could fit this stuff in. Okay. What would you do, Mr. Duick, if you did that dumb mistake, like made a two into a seven overall? I'd probably work yours out because you've accidentally changed the equation. We call that a transcription error in the marking realm. And I'd probably give you a three and a half out of four still. Number seven, another log equation. Mr. Duick says our strategy is to write this as one thing equals one thing. Well, the right-hand side isn't too hideous. This is going to be the log of 2 times 22 minus 2x. Two yeah. I can't cancel the logs out. I need to move this 2 up to there. I need to go log... 3 minus x all squared. Now, do I have one log equals one log? Okay, then the logs cancel. Okay, I'm taking the analog, but fine, the logs cancel. And I'll end up with an equation that looks like this. 3 minus x squared equals 2 bracket 22 minus 2x. I'll get rid of brackets. 44 minus 4x. This is 3 minus x times 3 minus x. I think it ends up being 9 minus 6x plus x squared when you FOIL it out when you write the bracket twice and do the FOIL. Shannon, what kind of an equation is this? How do I know? It's got a squared. What am I going to do first before I do anything else? Going to make it equal to 0. I think I'm going to minus and plus these guys over. I'm going to get x squared. I'll plus 4x to both sides. That gives me a minus 2x. I'll minus 44 from both sides. Uh, 9 take away 44 is... You get minus 35. I'll factor. Are there numbers that multiply to negative 35 and add to negative 2? If I didn't factor, I'd quadratic formula... Oh, no! There is, it does factor! Whew x minus 7, x plus 5 equals 0. What are my roots? 7 and negative 5. Oh no, we got to see if Ryan gets a date after all. Go back to the original question. If I put a 7 right there, what's 3 take away 7? Negative 4. Oh no, Ryan, I'm so sorry. Uh, let's try the negative 5. 3 minus minus 5, I'm good with that. 22 minus negative. I'm good with that too. That works okay. And here there is no x, so I ignored that term there. 
So this one looks like it's okay. In terms of part marks, I did that. Half mark for combining the logs, a half mark for getting rid of the logs, a half mark for doing some algebra, half mark for the quadratic, half mark for the factors, half mark for each solution, but a half mark off if you didn't cross out the extraneous root. Oh, hey, hey, hey. What if I'd also ended up crossing this one out? What if that one hadn't worked? How many solutions are there then? Yes, you may have no solution. It's possible. What that's really saying, Carson, is this graph never crosses this graph. It could have. It'll be a fluke. It doesn't happen very often, but it's out there. If you could give yourself a lovely score, please, out of 16. Is it out of 16? And those of you that were away, can you, away, can you put a great big omit on your quiz so I don't give you a zero? Can you open your books to last day? We looked at logarithmic scales. We looked at Richter scale, decibels, and pH. And we said that they were all actually scales based on powers of 10. Oh, no, decibels were based on powers of 10 divided by 10. And I remembered that because of the deci prefix. I could remember that. We said, as it turns out, when you're looking at how sound works, when you're looking at how earthquakes work, when you're looking at how pH works, the dif a difference of one actually means 10 times stronger. So an earthquake of Richter scale 3 and an earthquake of Richter scale 5, it's not 5 take away 2 twice as strong. It's 5 take away 2 10 to the 2, 10, 100 times as strong. I gave you some questions to try. And I'll start out by saying any questions from the homework now is your chance to ask, and I'll probably be talking about the very last question, number 12, I believe it was, in a second, so relax, but. Any of these? All went good? What was the thing, and, and this, you are going to have to memorize, it's I said it's always going to be 10 to the first minus second equals how many times stronger. That you'll have to, that if you're making a study sheet up or I think we wrote it down a few times in our notes, like that's what I would kind of star or put a little asterisk next to or, or, or something. In fact, I even had you guys repeat it. I think, oh, please, I wrote it in the notes somewhere. Did I not? Please tell me I wrote it down in the notes somewhere. Oh, there, at least once there. There's what I fall back on. So, hey, let's look at number 12. Sorry, number, yeah, no, number 11. This, this is the one. All right. There is an easy way to, a clever way to do number 11, showing no work, because it's multiple choice. And then there's the mathematical way. I'm going to do the easy way first. It says this. Two different jets are flying together in an air show. Anybody ever been to the Abbotsford Air Show? Okay. If you haven't, well worth going at least once. It's quite entertaining. Each with a sound level of 120 decimals. Then the approximate total, so if there's two jets, first of all, Steph, if one jet is 120, will two jets possibly be less? That's a dumb answer. Will two jets possibly be less? That's a dumb answer. Maybe. Oh, at air shows, do people regularly have their fillings shatter and scream in pain because they're exposed to 240 decibels of sound when we said the painful level was 160 decibels? Do people go to air shows and do we have ambulances coming out of air shows time after time after time? Andrew, what's the obvious answer by thinking it through that way? Now, the real question is, all right, do it. Prove it. Okay. Okay. Here's what we're really saying. There's one plane. Remember we said decibels, you divide by 10. There's one plane, yes? Can I, instead of writing 120 over 10, can I put a 12 there now? Q 
here's two planes. Yes? That equals 10 to what power? And once I know the exponent, I should be able to figure out what decibel, decibel level that is. Katie, is that okay? Now, here is where I would cheat just a little bit. Here is where I would cheat just a little bit. What's my base right here? What's my base right here? What's my base right here? I'm actually going to bring them to the same side. Because this is, an, this is an exponential equation, but it does have part of the same base, which we don't often deal with, I'm going to divide this to this side. I'm going to write this as 2 equals 10 to the x divided by 10 to the 12th. So far, so good? I have no idea where I'm going, but that looks nicer. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are my bases the same? When you're dividing with exponents, what did you do when your bases were the same? There's another way I can write that right-hand side. Yeah, minusing. I can act, you know what? The equation is actually this. When I do some fancy schmancy algebra, Nicole. Where's the x sitting, Nicole? I know I did that on purpose mid-yawn. That was fun. Where's the x sitting? So I'm going to log both sides, base 10. And Nicole, because I'm in a rush, I'm actually going to take a shortcut and move the exponents down to the front all on the same line. I would never do that on a test or a quiz because I've told you, well, you saw I made a dumb mistake today in my answer key. Um, this is interesting. What is the log of 10? Sorry? Oh, that's even nice. So if I hear you correctly, I get this. Log 2 equals x minus 12. How would I get the x by itself? Please. Pl thank you. Plus 12. Okay. I get this. x is going to be the log of 2 plus 12. So I go running off to my calculator. Log 2 plus 12. And I get that x is 12.3. Hey, Mr. Duick, wait a minute. That was answer A. Oh, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Okay. By the way, I'm not going to give you one quite this tough. I'm only doing this for the nerdiness of it. And it is good practice to find the other ones easier. Here's what we're saying then. Two jets is the same as that. But Ryan... That's in bells. Do you remember for decibels, we actually divided the exponent by 10? If you want the answer in decibels, it's 123 decibels divided by 10. That's how we get 123 decibels. It, we have to reverse the procedure. Remember, Amanda, I had 120 over 10 up here, and then I said, I'm going to write that as a 10. So I went backwards to say, well, instead of 120, what would be up there? 123 so you can use that second method. I would use my first clever method if I were you. Yes? Uh, did anybody do it that way? But anybody notice that it has to be C? Yeah. You are smarter than your brother. I mean, good. Yes, I'll upload this video, and you can drag your brother in front of this video and fast forward right to here and say, look, 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 Mr. Duick is still making fun of you. Still, what did you do to him? Is that all right? So how will this show up on your test? You know what? I'm probably going to put one multiple choice logarithmic scale question and one written logarithmic scale question. And it'll be on pH, decibels, or Richter scale. Okay. You, you, you know what the funny thing is? I've done that, what, now? Five or six times? I can still see a few eyes. What's he yelling for? That's stupid. <sighs> okay. There's only so much I can do. 
Turn if you would please to page 203. We skipped one more lesson because we're going to do that one actually afterwards. Page 203. Page 203. Under the B, 2. Under the I, O. Under the N, 3. Page 203. Page 15 squared minus 22. So we just looked at applications of log scales. Now we're going to look at applications of exponential growth. And I have to start out by scaring you is the wrong I gotta give you a little shock therapy this is probably on my list one of the top five toughest things we'll do all year because what we're really gonna be looking at here Katie is word problems now don't freak out don't freak out I'm gonna teach you how to dissect them we're gonna be doing word problems and we're gonna end up with exponential equations so we're gonna have to use logs to solve them it's a tough concept it is nerdily cool trust me at least once in here oh that's how they figure some of that stuff out so read along with me. It says this. We're probably going to go right to almost the tone today. I'm going to probably do part one of the lesson today, assign a couple of the questions for homework, and then we're really going to jump into things the next day. Remember, an exponential function is a function whose equation looks like that. There is a base. The x is an exponent, and it's, there may or may not be a coefficient. Okay, this time, there is almost always going to be a coefficient, because now we're looking at real-world problems, and the numbers are never as nice as the fake ones that we can try for graphing. Your base is rarely going to be a 2. It's usually going to be a decimal. Oh, and we said, if as long as A is positive, if your base is bigger than 1, it's an exponential growth. Kirsten looks like that. If your base is less than 1, it's an exponential decay. It's getting smaller. It says this. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to look at that paragraph yet because that paragraph refers to the previous lesson, which we've skipped right now. Instead, I'm going to tell you that every single exponential growth equation looks as follows. Can you turn the page, please? And go to page 205 at the bottom of page 205. This right here is the template that we're going to memorize. We're going to say every single exponential growth equation looks like this. Although, I'll be honest, Ragji, I, I get a little sloppy. I don't put the T subscript there because that's saying A of T. I, I don't want to complicate it with the function notation. What I write whenever they give me an exponential growth word problem, and you'll learn how to recognize them pretty easily, the first thing that I do is I say A equals a zero C to the T over P. You don't need to write that right now. Yes, you do. Can you turn back, please, to the beginning of the lesson? And right where that paragraph of blah, 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 blah is, where it says writing an equation using Y equals A B to the X, we're going to say, actually, it's going to be A equals A zero C to the T over P. Say, what? Write that down. Put a box or a star or something. You do need to memorize this equation. Now, you'll probably write it out so often. If you discipline yourself, Jessica, to write it down every time you're doing a question, even if you've just written it in the question above, that's probably the easiest way that your brain will just memorize it because you're naturally lazy. Let's talk about what all of these mean. The letter capital A means the final amount. That's why we use A for amount. So whatever number you get here, that's what you end up with. That's what you finished with. They sometimes put a T, the final amount with respect to time. I don't like putting that little T subscript. That's too many. Yeah, confusing, Ashley. So I won't make you, even though they did in the book. Physics people, what do you think A0 stands for? I'll give you a hint. It's a certain type of an amount. What did the 0 stand for often in physics? Okay, this is your initial amount. That's at least nice and consistent with physics notation. C 
is your growth rate. It's also called your growth constant, which is why they use the letter C for constant. I always use the letter R for rate, but I want to be consistent with your book, so I'll use theirs. T, physics people, what does lowercase t always stand for? Time. I'm going to add a word in front of it. Total time. And the lowercase p stands for the growth period. Uh, the population doubles every five years, your growth period would be five. Population doubles every six months, your growth period would be 0.5, half a year. Population doubles every year, your growth rate would be, your growth period would be one. Okay? Now, if you memorize this, then, Katie, it kind of becomes fairly plug and chug-ish. says this. Example one. In 2002, the university population of a country was 160,000, increasing at an annual rate of 4.5%. A says, write an equation to represent the university population as a function of time. Now... I'm going to cross out the letter P and I'm going to put A for final amount just this once. And instead of N years, I'm going to put T time. Okay? And we would start out by saying final amount equals initial amount times C to the power of T over P. And now we would plug stuff in. This 2002, we're going to come back to. What's this 160,000? Your initial amount. If you can put an equal sign, and in front of the, co of the where C, there's going to be, there's your initial amount, 160,000. Katie, in this case, the final amount is what they're asking us to find. Trust me, I know there's going to be an A there. Final amount equals but your initial amount is 160,000. What's your growth rate? It's often a percentage. Can you see it? Okay. Don't write 4.5% yet. First of all, 4.5 what? Okay, we can never do math with a percent. We always have to change it to a decimal. So what's 4.5% as a decimal? Math 8. What's 50? Don't write this down. What's 50% as a decimal? 0.5. What's 2% as a decimal? What's 5% as a decimal? 0 0.05. So what's 4.5% as a decimal? Put a bracket here. Leave a small space, but put a 0 0.045. But leave a space in front of the point. because this isn't quite right. It's actually that as your growth rate. 1.045. Why is it that? Look up. First of all, what's 1 as a percentage? No, what's 1 as a percentage? Carson, thank you for remembering your math 8. Here's what you're saying. Your original population plus 4.5% every year. That's why you have to have a 1 in front of it, Katie, because your original population is still there, and it's increasing by 4.5%. Your growth rate is 4.05 to the power of T over... What's the growth period? It says... The population is increasing at an annual rate. That means it's increasing every year, every one year, 
your growth period here would be 1. Trust me, it'll get easier. This is your equation. Your final amount is equal to your initial amount times your percentage increase plus 1 to the power of time divided by however long the growth period is. Annual means every year. What if it said semi-annually every half year? It'd be a 0.5 here. What if it said biannually? It'd be every two years. There'd be a two here. What if it said every decade? It'd be a 10 here. Okay. B says, determine the university population in the year 2005. What do they want me to determine? What do they want me to determine, Shannon? Read. Which of these is the final university population? This? This? You wrote this down, didn't you? Did you write that down? So what does the A stand for? Look it down. Look at your notes. Look at your notes. Look at your notes. Look at your notes. Let's keep looking at your notes. See that right? Okay, keep looking there. Look down. What, is, what did you write next to the A? Wouldn't that be the university population? They want us to find A. Okay? In other words, if they want us to find the university population in the year 2005, the university population is going to be 160,000 times 1.045 to the power of what? What year are we in? What year are we in? No, no. What year are we in according to this question right here, right now? What year did this question start? What am I going to put right here? Here's my variable. Is my variable an exponent? No, this is not logs. This is go to your calculator, type that in, plug and chug. What is 1,600 times 1.045 cubed? Calculators, please. Hundred and sixty thousand times one point zero four five cubed. What do you get? Four point six seven? We're starting with hundred and sixty thousand people. There's no way we have four point six seven. I don't think you've multiplied by hundred and six. 160,000 times 1.045 cubed, right? What do you get? You got 182,586.6? Yes? 182,580. Um, can we have 0.6 of a person? Well, there's Mitsu. No, can we have 0.6 of a person? Well, let's round up. 182, 5, 8, 7. Yes? Yes? Okay. C. C says, if the population continues to grow at this rate, determine the number of years to the nearest year for the population to double. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down A equals A0 C to the T over P. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down A equals A0 C to the T over P. Partly because it helps me to memorize the thing and partly because that's how I'm going to approach solving this, Cassandra. Thank you. First thing we're all going to do is write down A equals A0, C to the T over P. And then we're going to do in physics what I call deficking. We're going to list our data. What was A0? What was my initial population in the information that they gave me? 
I'm going to write over here Do I know the final population? I do indirectly. What's the final population supposed to be according to this particular question? How do you get 320,000? More specific, what was the word that told you double? What was my growth constant, my growth rate? We were increasing by what percent? 4.5%, which means 1.045. And we were increasing every two years, every one year, every six months, every one month, every week. What were we increasing? It said increasing annually, which means increasing every one year. You guys okay? Because I'm seeing lots of giggling back there. I hope it's math related. What are they asking me to find in this question? Out of all of these, what's missing? What don't I know? What are they asking me to find? Nicole, did you say it? I thought you said it. Sorry. What did you say? T. Let's plug everything else in. Final amount, 320,000, equals initial amount, 160,000, times 1.045 to the t over 1. Am I going to write the over 1, though? No. Aha! Where is the variable sitting now, Amanda? Oh, how will I solve this, then? This is why it's part of this unit. We're going to use logs. But first, we're going to do something clever. Before we take the log of both sides, because I don't have an exponent over here, I'm going to get this exponent by itself. I'm going to move this 160,000 over. How? What's this 160,000 doing to the bracket mathematically? I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide by 160,000. Divide by 160,000. And I don't need to reach for my calculator, Andrew. Are you serious? Because I know that 320,000 divided by 160,000, Andrew, I'm positive, is 2. No calculator required. How will I solve this? How will I solve this? Log both sides. OK, I was bad. I also moved the exponent to the front on the same line. This is about the only time I let myself take a shortcut, because these are usually pretty clean when you get to this line. Holly, how would I get the t by itself? More specific, divide by what? I heard you say divide by, ah, yes. If I'm not mistaken, the amount of time is going to be the log of 2 divided by the log of 1.045. How many years after 2002 will this university, or will this pop, yeah, university population of this country have doubled? Sorry? It says to the nearest year. Okay. Um, would that be helpful to know if you were a country? Would that influence how many universities you were building over those years and at what rate? Yeah. Because if your university population is doubling in 16 years, you better make sure in 16 years you get twice as many university spots. Okay. This is exponential growth. Turn the page.
Figure it out? Good. Example two. The number of fish in a lake is decreasing. I want you to all to underline the word decreasing by 5% each year as a result of overfishing. It says, write an equation to represent the number of fish after t years. Use n0 to represent the initial population and n of t to represent the final population. Okay. At the top of the page here, I'm going to write a equals a0 c to the t over p. That's my generic equation, my template that I've memorized. Except instead of a0, what do they want me to use for the initial population? Read the question. Itzel? Instead of a0, what do they want me to use for the initial population? Instead of a0, thank you. They want me to use n of t for my final population. OK, I'll use their variable and make them happy. What percent are we decreasing by? What percent are we decreasing by? Please read the question. If we're losing 5%, what percent is left behind? 95. In other words, for percentages, it's 1 plus if you're gaining. 1 plus 4.5%. If you're losing, it's 1 minus. If you're losing, 1 minus 5%. To the power of t, and it says each year. Each year means the period is just 1. So I, it's t over 1. This is your equation. Right now, of course, it has 1, 2, 3 variables. We can't solve this. But I bet you in B they're going to give us some more information that says this. If there were 2,500 fish present in January 2000, how many would you expect to be present in January 2005? What's this 2,500? I think it's the initial population. What do they want me to find in this question? What do they want me to find in this question? How many? Oh, you know what? Final population. That must mean somehow they've given me the time. How many years is this population talking about? This question talking about? Oh, how'd you get the five? Oh, 2000, 2005. Okay, five. Is my variable sitting as an exponent? Nuh uh. Cassandra, is my variable already by itself? Oh, then go to your calculators, please. What is 2,500 times 0 0.95 to the fifth? What population is left? One thousand nine hundred and uh, can we have point five of a fish? Well, give me a little minnow. That probably about one thousand nine hundred and thirty. Be real honest. C. After how many years to the nearest tenth? would it take for the population to reduce to half the number in January 2000? Now, this is where the fact that people don't understand how exponential growth and decay really hammers us in politics or in society. We're going to solve this in a second, but a lot of people, someone without a math background would say, well, you're losing 5%. How long to get to 50%? 
uh, 5%, uh, 10 years, they'll say. Oh, we got 10 years before we only got half left. I can tell you the answer is far less than 10 years because this part of the curve is decaying very, 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 very steeply. Let's plug in numbers. What's my initial amount in January 2000? 2,500. What's my final amount that they want this to have? It says reduce to half. So how many fish do we want left? 1,250. Point nine five, and they want how long would it take? How many years? T is my variable. Where is T sitting? Exponent. How will I solve it? Well, I'll eventually take the log of both sides, but is there a coefficient in front? Is there an exponent over here? Then I'm actually going to go divide by 2,500. Divide by 2,500. And Andrew, without a calculator, can you please tell me what 1,250 divided by 2,500 will be? This divided by that, what will it be? You know how I knew it would be a half? <clears throat> Here's my equation. How will I solve this one? Log both sides. I'll get the log of 0.5 equals, and I'm going to be bad and move the exponent to the front, log of 0.95. Christian, how would I get the t by itself? What's happening between the t and the log? So how will I move the log over? Are you saying divide by log? No, I think you're whispering it or maybe even thinking it because I'm having a re uh, Is that what you said? A little more volume next time. I no idea what that was. I saw this. I, I think you said divide by log. Yeah, I agree. T is going to be, Kirsten, that log of 0.5 divided by the log of 0.95. I'm going to tell you, you don't have 10 years until you're down 50%. How many years? Sorry? 14? Thirteen point five says to the nearest what in the question? Can't okay, read the instructions for rounding, right? You got thirteen and a half years. You okay? Good. We're going to come back to continuous growth and decay in a second. What I'm going to assign you for homework right now is questions where they're giving you the equation. We have been deriving the equation, which is the tricky part. We're going to practice that way more when I see you guys next. But for now, if you turn to page 207, you can do number one, number two, And I think for now, I think, yep, that's going to be it. Okay.